Hello, everyone, and welcome to the writer's class. I almost nodded off in my own chair. This chair is comfortable, by the way. This chair was like a lazy boy office chair. Oof, I'm not going to lie to you. When we sat here in the studio, it changed everything. Because before we had flat chairs, because that we were like, it keeps us awake, but it also hurts our backs. So that there's nothing like pain to keep you wide awake. <laughs> and then we got the lazy boy all the problems we have now anyway no one cares about the problems of me about to nod off doing my own show although i'm an exciting interviewer and an exciting person i'm just gonna nod off because i think i use too much energy that's what it is not because i'm boring Ooh, i finished that rant anyway here we go by the way i do make sense in my books when i occasionally write things down i make sense Julia. and those hello Julia. jade do you? It's a surprise appearance from Jade. A surprise appearance, really? Yes. I'm kind of, I'm almost shocked. Almost but <laughs> it's not important. We We're moving like on. We write literary life. Oh my goodness. Well, she's pop not, poetry. But she's not here. I don't say that. Say it again, Jade. Literary life guys with pop poetry. Okay. And those literary life guides of pop poetry are, and I thought divorce was bad. If only I were me a memoir on divorce, and I thought being grown up was easy. Widow's web, widow's debt, and foreign coffee. And uh, you get all of those when you get your audio book. Well done, Jay. I was about to go into the whole explanation about math and sign language because I made what? it like a PBS show up in here. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So you can find out everything you're lazy doing at www.antithoughtladies.com. Okay. But you're not here to hear about me. You're here to hear about our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Laura Border. I live in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm the president of the Boulder Writers Alliance. Thank you. Okay, she just explained what a Writers Alliance is. And I have written five questions that I'm supposed to ask her. But we need to know what a Writers Alliance, Alliance is. is. Yup. What's a Writers Alliance? So the Boulder Writers Alliance is a group of local writers in Boulder County in Colorado. And the writers, it's, it's a motley crew of writers. They do different kinds of publications and editing and writing, commercial writing, journalistic writing, um, fiction writing, nonfiction writing. And we get together. Um, we, we have critique groups during COVID. We've been meeting on Zoom, mostly pre, pre COVID. We met at the Boulder Public Library and had, um, monthly, several monthly workshops going on. Um, we also have a book group of writers. You need to be writing to be in the group. And it's led by a, a gentleman named Gary Allen McBride, who's phenomenal. And um, it's called Writers Who Read, and Gary calls his process literary forensics. So in that particular group, um, we're all novelists, and we all read the novels to learn how to write a novel and how not to write a novel sometimes. I love that, how not to write a novel. So if you guys need more of that, um, my books are available on Amazon. <laughs> you want to like how not to write a novel. Well, Nona's books are <laughs> readily available. Anyway, so my next question to you is going to be, how did you get started writing? Well, most, if you ask most writers that, they say they've written since they were children. Um, it's when you decide to call yourself a writer, I think. I, I always wrote poetry. I always wrote stories. Um, but for many years, I called myself an academic because I worked at the university. And, um, but about, I don't know, in, in the 1990s, I started writing a novel, which I'm still working on. <laughs> writing a novel is a slow process. Um, but at the time, I, I remember giving it to several people to read and they said, my God, Laura, you're a writer. You need to get this published. So it's funny because there's the personal perception of being a writer. And then there's other people's perception of you as a writer. So I take myself seriously as a writer right now. And, and um, I'm a member of the Women Writing the West group, 
It's a wonderful group of women novelists. And um, so this year I joined a critique group and I'm working with two other women who are both published novelists. And so monthly we are workshopping our own work and I'm learning a lot from both of them. They're very talented and very interesting women. And um, so I'm starting to feel more like a writer. I mean, I was published as an academic, but if you talk to a, a novel publishing kind of editor, they say, well, that doesn't count. <laughs> it's a totally different kind of writing. Um, I actually wrote gra French grammar books, believe it or not. Oh, and um, I, have French, I, have a, I have a PhD in French literature. Wow. So, so and, my um, question earlier was dumb if you parlez vous français. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oui, je, oui, c'est vrai, je parle français. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I think the question of being a writer is are you published? Is one way, you know, a lot of writers I, I talk to say they didn't consider themselves writer until they were published. Um, so I've published, you know, literary papers, um, textbooks, uh, I published a book of poetry and my hope is to publish a novel at some point. Okay. So, um, it sounds like I was going to ask you the question about like, how did uh, the community help you in your writing journey? But I feel like you covered that all. Oh, I think the community is very, very important. And that's why I'm president of Boulder Writers Alliance, because I one of my goals as president is to encourage young people to join writing associations in their, in their area. Because um, what I've learned in my life, I, as I did a lot of professional development for graduate students, that was my, French was my early academic career professional development for graduate students was my later academic career. And um, what I realized working with the graduate students is that they were working on a subject on a degree, but they did not have a clue how to be or become a university professor. They just, nobody ever talks about that. Um, like in my, in my program, nobody ever talked about career development. Um, so what I've learned in my career is how important associations are, joining and participating with people who are interested in what you are interested in, because you make connections, you know, people use the word networking, which always kind of bothered me because it felt superficial, but to me, the talking about it is professional development and creating important connections for yourself is um, essential to having a career in whichever career you're in. For you. Okay, first of all, I, before I even ask my next question, I have a really hard time when I've written the questions down. Can you tell? <laughs> There's so many other things I want to talk about. Well, you can, you can ask me anything. I'm, I'm easy to talk to. But like, I love when you said that it's important to find so, find your community because there are so many intric there's so many small things that you just don't know that um, if you don't know them, you can't have a good career. It's kind of like the nuts and the bolts. Like, if you don't know, it's not, your career. Yeah, for example, together. Um, I've had young novelists say, well, I have no idea how to get an agent. And I say, well, join Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers, which hosts a conference in Denver every year. And every year at their conference, they have 10 agents approximately who come in and they're looking for potential novelists because their job is to pub get you published. And, and so they're, and they know other people who they could recommend. So all you have to do is go to the conference and attend their sessions and talk to them. They're just people like, like Will Nona and Laura, and they'll talk to you. They definitely will. 
we do actually for once once a year we do a literary agent panel where we have like about four or five different literary agents that cover different things and you can come talk to them and that way you don't have to you know pay for the whole convention <laughs> it's online come talk to them oh uh, okay moving on because this interview is not about me and what i do i am the narcissist of the group can you tell uh let's talk about your writing process you said you're an academic writer and now you're a novelist that's kind of like two different processes am i correct well not i'm i mean not really you'd be surprised how similar they are because um obviously to do academic writing you have to do a ton of research and um what I've learned as a novelist is how much research I have to do to write. I, I mean, I, I do a ton of research um, because even one of the novels I'm working on is placed in, in my era. So it's something I, I lived through. It's not, a, it's not a biography or anything, but, but I lived it, so I know it. But it is astounding how much stuff I have to look up um and because you don't want to make mistakes you know there's nothing that makes a a reader more impatient than reading an absolute error in a novel they just go well this was a lazy writer um so the research piece is very similar obviously the creative piece is very different mm -hmm. because um i try to write creative novels. I've, I've read so many novels lately that feel like fictionalized autobiography. And that's not the kind of writer I want to be. I like a story. And, um, and I like to imagine the people and, you know, how they dressed, how they talked, who they, who they were in love with, who they dumped, you know, kind of like, um, what was going on, you know, what was going on at the time it takes a lot of research because you don't want to make temporal, historical mistakes. And um, the books I'm working on, one is, is about the, um, you know, like post-World War I. So obviously I wasn't alive then. Um, one is pre-World War II, obviously I wasn't alive then. And one is in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, they're very, they're totally different stories. But um, my process is to keep writing. Um, I told you earlier that I think as I write. And so when you're making up a novel, um, you know, I create kind of a frame with characters, but I don't really know where it's going to go. And so one of the things I did through Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers that was really fun and very productive for me was... Um, kind of like NaNoWriMo, but it was much shorter. It was only four days. I participated in several of them. And the goal was to write 25,000 words in four days, which I found to be very easy. I set my time aside and I had that time. And I produced about 6,000 words a day, you know, plus I had to make 25,000. And I found that writing 6,000 words a day was, easy just to let my imagination go and um so one of my novels i drafted that way and i drafted it by just writing the characters i'd kind of think of a scene and then i'd write it from different characters points of view or time frame or something you know and um so that that's the novel i'm I'm workshopping with my critique group right now. This sounds terrific. It sounds like it's going to be a great read. I noticed that you mentioned that you it was kind of you you entered something that was kind of like Nanorama. I just want to mention if you want a real kick in the pants to get it done, September third through the fifth of this year is the three day novel contest. You start a novel and finish a novel in three days. It's oh so much fun. I love doing it because like. That means like, I, I know you start with an empty page and by the time you're done, you've got yeah. a novel. Yeah. And I'm like, oh good, I got my novel for the year, move on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, if you wanna try it, that would probably be fun. Yeah, that might be fun. I never tried to write a whole novel in three days. 
Yeah, it's a it's a beast. You do nothing else. That's it. That's it. Okay. Next, on to the next question. I tell you, I, I tell you, I'm terrible when I have them written down. What advice do you want to give new writers? <laughs> well, my, my doctoral dissertation, who was a French woman, who wrote a lot in her career, sat me down one day and said, Laura, don't get it right, get it written. And um, you know, she said, we can edit it later. And that was very good advice because I was young and I was worried and didn't think I could do it, you know? And, um, and so what I find is if I wanna write something new, I, if it's a poem, I like to set myself a goal. And so during COVID, I set myself the goal of, I live in, on the front range of the Rocky Mountains. It's very beautiful outside here. And I only have to go about um, 10 blocks up to be literally on a mountain. <laughs> and um, so I set myself the goal of going to, up and writing a full moon poem, every full moon. and. Um, I, I actually, self, actually set myself three goals, to write a full moon poem, uh, a new moon poem, and I wanted to write a moon set poem, but I failed miserably at that. I could not get up early enough to do that. <laughs> I can stay up late, but I can't get up early. And so during COVID, it was a wonderful process because it got me out of the house in the evening alone. And I would respond to what was going on around me, you know, make it just literally very emotive, very physical, sound, hearing, um, you know, the five senses. And um, I came up with some really cool poems. <laughs> Oh, in that kind of setting, that's all you can do is come up with great poems. Yeah. The moon, the silence, the uh, the mountains. Yeah. Oh, all you. Yeah, and I think you could choose any subject, like even your garden. Um, I wrote a poem about my garden recently because we were doing a, a workshop for the Boulder Writers Alliance, and we were supposed to write about something present. And my garden's right outside my window. So I wrote about my garden. Wow. You guys sound like you have so much fun writing. I almost, it makes, makes me miss my writers a lot. My uh, writers, well, Maryland Writers Association. It makes me miss my chapter a little bit. Anyway, ah, that's over. It's done. I, the missing is finished. Uh, can you tell us where we can find out more information about you, where we can find out about your works? Because you have Moon Chimes out, right? Yeah, Moon Chimes is available on Amazon. Okay, and where can we find out more information about you? Well, I do, I do write a monthly blog that is called, um, well, my website is called Laurel Communications. Okay. And um, so I'm on, I think this is the, I'm in the middle of the fifth year of my blog. And um, I started writing the blog beginning on January 1. And because I had, I had attended a workshop led by a social media expert through Boulder Writers Alliance, um, who said that if you're going to write a blog or do anything else, pick a time and stick to it because nobody wants to read the Sunday newspaper on Thursday. You know, it just makes sense. And so, and that was like, I don't know, eight months or so before I actually started writing my blog. And I thought, well, I think I'd like to write a blog. 
And so that fall, I um, drafted about six blogs and I ran them by my daughter, who's a phenomenal writer and um, a career coach. <laughs> and she writes a ton. She writes for a lot of online, excuse me, a lot of online stuff. Um, so I sent them to Allison and I said, what do you think of this? Would this be interesting for a blog? She wrote back, mom, it's cool. <laughs> and I thought, well, if she thinks it's cool, I'll, I'll try it out. So, and because I like the number seven, um, I decided I would publish my blog on the seventh of each month, just one blog a month and be regular and prepared and you know be able to do it. And so I decided my topic would be writing a novel. So it's kind of like, um, you could call it self-analysis in a way of the experience of writing a novel. And so the first year I just set, I picked my topics ahead of time. Um, I don't remember what the topics were the first year. This year, I decided to pick the month itself as a topic. And that's been very interesting because, again, it's led me to research how novelists use months in their own writing. Wow. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I just sort of chose it as, well, I need a topic. Oh, I know, I'll write about the months. And, um, and it's worked. And I've learned. So I'm writing my blog literally for myself to learn and think about and ponder about my own writing. But I have a pretty good readership. People from around a hundred countries have read my blog. That's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, you know. That is so amazing. Bangladesh. You know? <laughs> In the what? Bangladesh, you know, somebody from Bangladesh. I can't tell who it is, but I can tell where they're from. Exactly. That's so amazing. So I've got people all over Europe. I've got a whole bunch of Chinese. Um, I've got, there are a lot of Indian, India Indians. Um, but they're literally from all over the world, like a hundred countries. That's just amazing. I, that, whew, you think about that and you're like, your words are out there and they're, they're touching people not just in the United States, but around the world. You're having yeah, an effect, an international effect. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for being here. Before I, we leave, I do have one other question that was not on the five questions, which is how can one speak or do a workshop at the Boulder Writers Association? Because I know a lot of authors who wanna know that. <laughs> All they have to do is email me. <laughs> I should have said, I also know a narcissist who wants to know that. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do, especially since we're doing them on Zoom. And I think, I'm, I know this fall will continue Zoom because right now with the Boulder Public Library, we cannot plan ahead. And we need to plan our workshops, you know, for September, October, November, December. So if you know a poet who would like to speak at my Boulder Poet, Boulder Poet, Boulder Writers Alliance Poetry Circle. I'm looking for five poets this fall. Um, Are you really now? Don't 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 say this now because I'll get you all five. <laughs> I, I am looking for five, um, and because it's on Zoom, you know, it's possible to beam in from anywhere. And then the other workshops. We're, we've done for a long time a workshop that is called Write to, Write to Publish, Publish to Sell, which covers the, the spectrum of writing. And um, the steering committee has been talking about potentially changing that series. So we've got a month or so to figure out what we're going to do with that one. That but, sounds like a potential uh, conference. Yeah, but it's just, it's, you know, it's once, once, one evening a month. 
and I'm just it's thinking, like in, in like the spring or something you could be like okay and we're having the right to publish publish to sell conference yeah yeah at the library <laughs> yeah we have sorry people say things and i'm immediately like i jump i'm like oh do you yeah i mean it would, be, it would be a good conference but we don't do conferences we just do workshops because we're all volunteers you know we're not really a paid staff or anything um so I, I know that we'll have our critique groups, um, which are face-to-face. -face, so you have to be in Boulder to do those. Um, they can be set up quickly. But the, like the, the poetry circle will definitely do online. And depending on what happens with COVID, um, I'm pretty sure we'll do our Wednesday workshops, our third Wednesday workshops online. Oh, okay. Well, you guys heard her. They're looking for poets and they're looking for people for their third workshop and their right to publish and publish to sell. Yeah. This is, this is good. Now, not, not the writer's critique series unless you're in Boulder or willing to catch a plane to Boulder. And back in the day, yeah, I the writer, oh, writer, writers, writers who read meets in person. What does is, what is writers who read do? do? Um, it's the group where where novelists read a novel and dissect it. I think I. Will. I mean, not one of our own. Like a, a we what we're reading is a novel that has been published within the last eighteen months, so a brand new novel. So right now we're looking at the Booker list. Oh, Let's yes. See, see what we're gonna pick. Yes, that is a great idea. Lovely beautiful novels to pick from. All right, thank you so much for being here. Again, tell people where they can find you. Um, a good way to contact me is on LinkedIn because anybody can message me on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm Laura so LB Border on LinkedIn. So you can there's message me. There's an easy messaging service there so you don't have to have a specific um, email or anything. Um, you could also email me, I guess, at border at colorado.edu. That's my university address, border at colorado.edu. So that is where you guys can uh, try to get on those opportunities to speak and build that writing speaker's resume. You know, you want to build your national and international connections. <laughs> exactly. Or you could like, since they have Zoom, maybe you can listen in and learn something. There you go. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I, I have never been to a workshop where I did not learn something. That is terrific. Yeah, that- I, In fact, I had a guy, it was funny. I was doing a workshop on goal setting for creative work one night. And this guy who's, who's a, a, a national writer, he's, he's written for like every big, press and magazine and he was there helping out just you know like plugging in the <laughs> equipment and stuff and um I said hey you know you need to sit down and do this workshop and he says really I says yeah trust me you need to do it and when the workshop was over he stopped afterwards and he said Laura Border you just changed my life <laughs> I was amazed because he was truly experienced. So you know so, what they say about you writing. know the important thing about living and writing is growing and learning. Exactly. Together. You know what they say about writing? If you choose yeah. writing as a profession, it's like going home every night with homework. And you know, whenever you did homework, you learned a little something just a little, you became better at a skill or learned a new skill. Exactly. That's all we do. We learn new skills, we experience new things, we observe the world, yeah. try to get a different viewpoint, and then we write it down for history's sake. That exactly. is our job. Well, I appreciate Love very her. much your attention, well known it. And I wish you good luck with your your own work and your own progress and your, your um, video publications. I think it's just terrific that you're doing this kind of work. 
thank you so much she actually did the homework and looked us up y'all you know we feel sorry for her <laughs> well i'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up for over here you okay. can find out everything that your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com while you're there go down to the middle of the page and you can see the charities that we proudly support we ask that you please take some time out and give them some support as well uh, it could be as simple as uh, the knowledge that you have or you could give them finances either or and please remember, you guys, remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilmona and the Missing Jade. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.